Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Annie Wren, and I'm a postdoctoral fellow here at the Australian uh, Centre on China and the World. Um, it is my great pleasure today to introduce uh, this afternoon's speaker uh, for the China Seminar Series, Professor Liao Xingtian. So Professor Liao has many hats. Uh, he is currently a visiting fellow at the Center on China and the World here, but back in Taiwan, he is also a professor at the Graduate, the Graduate School of Art Management and Cultural Policy, the Yijin School, at the National Taiwan University of Arts. In addition, he is a well-known calligrapher and has taught a very uh, popular calligraphy class here at the ANU between 2010 and 2013. And we really hope to one day to be able to bring back uh, these calligraphy classes. In Taiwan, Pro uh, Professor Liao also served as the director of the National Museum of History between 2018 to 2022. And on top of everything else, he is also an award-winning host of an art-focused radio program back home. But despite his many titles and hats, I've observed that Professor Liao actually prefers to be called a sociologist, uh, one of the early uh, disciplines that he trained in. And this, I think, neatly captures his concern with broader intellectual and societal trends. And today's presentation, Modernity and Culture Politics, the rendering of qi yin shen dong and, moder and modernization of ink wash painting in Taiwan after World War II, goes far beyond the confines of Taiwanese art history. Instead, I think it engages with the million dollar question that has been at the center um, of Chinese intellectual debate since the late 19th century. A question that has engrossed the minds of both traditional literati like Zhang Zhidong, as well as reformist uh, intellectuals such as Liang Qichao. Namely, how to preserve the cultural essence of Chinese thought in the face of this disruptive force of Western modernity. And I think this is precisely the title of Professor Liao Xingtian's upcoming book, which you can see here. Uh, it's called Qi Yin Shen Dong, and uh, which, you know, for those of you who aren't familiar with the term, a traditional and influential Chinese aesthetic concept and its relationship with Xin Dai Xing, with modernity. And Professor Liao has spent the last 10 years researching and writing this book, which will surely be his magnus, magnus opus. And on this note, I will ask you to join me in welcoming Professor Liao to the podium. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, thank you all the audience being here. And uh, the very great greatest happy, happiness that I have here is that to see old friend, a new friend. And uh, 10 years ago, I come to ANU and uh, I teach Taiwan study and calligraphy. That is a great memory to me. And after that, I have a different kind of a connection. And so there are three parts I would like to share with you. First, reminiscence. I'm recording 10 years today, so I, 10 years ago. So I'm going to show you some images. The second thing is that uh, I'm going to tell you my rationale about the so-called Qi Yin Shen Dong. Why Qi Yin Shen Dong happened in Taiwan and its modernization. And the third thing is my research funding. Why there is Qi Yin Shen Dong in Taiwan and what happened that we have now? Okay, this is a, a three sections I'm going to share with you. And so the book is under editing. Uh, I'm very excited to see if it can be published at the end of this year. And uh, it's, in, it's printed in Chinese, but uh, there will be a full text of uh, English translation. Uh, I'm uh, asking my daughter to translate it. <laughs> uh, of course, we pay. <laughs> and so, uh, well, then I start my uh, speech. Uh, OK. Uh, a decade of searching and researching. Uh, you know, 10 years is not an easy thing. And when it comes to 10 years, I always remind me uh, a poem in Tang Dynasty Dao Jia, oh, You can see the uh, translation. 
It means that, uh, you know, when it comes to 10 years, what would you think about it? It's just happened that when I left from MU 10 years after, and it just happened during the time, I do a very interesting research on Qi Yun Sandong, just 10 years. So perhaps this is called so-called global release today. <laughs> I haven't talked about the idea uh, at MU CIW. So it's my honor to share with my uh, humble uh, research finding. And uh, as you can see that those chapters that I research is very much to do with uh, 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 Qi Yun and uh, the logic of Qi Yin, the usage of Qi Yin, and from Qi Yin to uh, auto gauge and uh, the so-called uh, reorientalization and uh, uh, print making the oriental, something like that. So the whole idea is a kind of a pragmatic research uh, case by case. At the end of the day, it gave me a kind of a contrary idea because at the very beginning, I'm just, I just wanted to look for what does Qi Yin Sendo mean in Taiwanese uh, modern English painting. But at the end of the day, I mean, the answer is just on the opposite. An antipode of that kind of research is so exciting. This is what I keep doing research because the interest of researching is that you can't expect what coming to you. I mean, most of you, you know that. And look, okay. The first one, 10 years ago, uh, I think some of you uh, remember uh, Kent Anderson, right? And uh, John Mecham, uh, John Minford, and Richard Rigby, and Xi uh, Yaotong. Uh, so that is 10 years ago. The very first day, the welcome party, and we took the photo. Uh, then I have several courses, such as the Modern Arts in Taiwan, and the uh, Taiwan history and the culture. And most, the most of what comes really is the calligraphy practice and the theory. So uh, uh, within that time, I even have uh, an exhibition at the uh, School of Art. That is, uh, you remember that I have a, you know, read that exhibition at the, uh, it's very, very interesting because uh, uh, a student, no matter what they know Chinese character, they study Chinese uh, study, doesn't matter. I mean, I find out young men, when they have a brush in, your, in their hand and you tell them how to do, they can do it and they can create new things. That is so amazing things to me. Uh, except that uh, I, I curate an uh, exhibition at ANU, that is the, the site of Formosa in 2011. And, uh, Hey, <laughs> Bruce Warner and uh, Denise uh, have uh, a dual exhibition at, in Taiwan, my home university, uh, National Taiwan University of Arts at that time. And I'm, I also curate different kind of the uh, exhibition. For example, I'm uh, the major curator of the uh, watercolor Vietnamese. Well, watercolor is a kind of a traditional way, but uh, I wanted to promote that kind of traditional way. And we have a Vietnamese nowadays in Taiwan. And I'm the uh, uh, major curator of that one. And we got two international awards uh, last time. And I'm going to uh, do the second uh, Vietnamese uh, next year. And uh, Era uh, Wakti uh, from uh, School of Art and uh, uh, Terry Tom here, and both of them were cordially invited to uh, join uh, my uh, watercolor exhibition. And except that, I actually do something, you know, I uh, just like, uh, you know, give some kind of image because uh, Annie has mentioned that uh, I'm the uh, 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 award winning <laughs> broadcast uh, host, something like that. And I'm going to do public TV next year because we have a, you know, to do some kind of image, but very much focus on, on, on art, on Taiwanese art. And also I published some books and uh, the curator and uh, in 2016, it's my honor to establish the very uh, first Taiwanese Art History Association in Taiwan. Until now, we are going to celebrate 10 years, 10 years anniversary. Okay. Uh, I'm going to very happy to announce you that uh, uh, last year we just uh, have a very uh, 
great project about uh, so-called encyclopedia of the Taiwan. And uh, this online encyclopedia is on. I'm the convener of art. And uh, uh, we uh, call about 20, a dozen, more than a dozen scholars to talk about different kinds of uh, entries. And the average entries is more than 1,000 words or to 3,000 words. So as you can see that for the past 10 years, uh, just like everyone, even under the COVID-19, and we try to survive and try to have a fun and try to find something to do. And that's the sort of, uh, what I'm going to do. And uh, I'm the curator of the uh, National Museum of History. And also I uh, embark on uh, uh, a kind of the very first uh, so-called Taiwanese art uh, dictionary. That is very, very important to me. And I, I, I tell people that uh, one day when I pass away, when I die, I would like to memorize, right, this is the person that who edited the very first uh, Taiwanese dictionary about art in Taiwan. I hope they can write that for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, everybody will go to that way. And so that is what I'm going to share with you that, uh, you know, the Qiyun Seng Dong in Taiwan. And uh, that is, uh, the idea is from uh, uh, 15,000 years ago, uh, Nan Qi, the Southern Qi Dynasty. We have a very good expert on Song Dynasty and the different, uh, the ancient uh, Chinese uh, Dynasty. But uh, I want to pick up that kind of idea. What is the influence of that idea 15,000 years ago, uh, 1,500 years ago, that influence now until now a day? I mean, in terms of contemporary and modern art. Okay, right. So the question that I ask, I show you. And the very first is that the uh, methodology. What I believe that uh, any art is very much to do with the, uh, uh, the human being, the story of us. And uh, I believe that the, what Pombridge said at the very beginning of his uh, great book, uh, The Story of Art, he said that the re there is, re uh, is no, really no, uh, is no such things as art. There are only artists, what we call the old work of art are not the result of some mysterious activity, but the objects made by human beings for human beings. So it's the story of, our, of us. I mean, any the creation of art is part of us. Okay, don't just take them as a kind of a, a, a beautiful object. They are story of human beings, just like the literature. And also, I'm very much influenced by uh, 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 Eric Hobsbawm, his book, the invention of tradition really, really get me because I don't believe that. What are you talking about? The tradition is tradition. Tradition is over there. And you say that tradition is the, is the present invention. What does that mean? When I get into that kind of idea, it really strikes me. And I hold that idea. And at the end of the day, through the 10 years research, I find out there is another example, very interesting example, to prove Hotspun said. As he said, that tradition which appears all claim to be old and uh, are often quite recent in origin and sometimes and sometimes invented the origin, recent and invented. And he also said that he did and maybe suggested that traditions and the pragmatic conventions or routines are inversely related. Well, uh, believe it or not. We'll see. And I also uh, influenced by some theories such as uh, Roland Barthes, uh, 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 the so-called rhetoric of images, because he teaches me how do I look at the images inside out and the outside in. So the way in which he wrote about the so-called uh, modern means and the, the visual text can be divided into denotation and connotation that is uh, form and the inside. And when we look at the uh, spaghetti, uh, uh, Italian spaghetti, what is said that this is talking about the nationality of Italian citizen, something like that. And uh, this image also shows that a colored kid salute to the colonial government. So there are something image messages that is different from the appearance what we see. Okay, this is very post-colonial study. And also I'm influenced by stool the representation and also 
the sociology of art because uh, the way in which we, uh, uh, I mean, look at decipher images, there are three theories and uh, I'm very much believe in uh, interpretation theory. I mean, any image or any phenomenon of visual culture, it's very, very much depends on us as an interpreter. Okay. Uh, so I also look at different kind of idea, especially uh, the so-called post-colonial post -colonial modernity that uh, talking about, that uh, talks about the Asian uh, nation's culture and visual arts, for example, the formation of colonial modernity and, and thinking your centrism and refractive modernity is the one that I contribute to one essay in that book in 2007, published by Hawaii University. So all you know, I'm going to talk about ways of thinking, ways of seeing. How do we see things depends on our interpretation and our ideology and what we believe. And so, uh, quickly, the second section. What does it mean by qi yun sen gao? What does it mean by qi? You know, Chinese Kung Fu or uh, Tai Chi. This one, this one, I can't do it. I just can't do it like that. You know, and the qi, air, breath, life, hammer, mentality. Sometimes we say proneness. Aliveness, ambition, atmosphere, taste, energy, spirit, invisible but inner, but it can be sen as sensed. Okay, we have a, a, a good translator here. I don't want to uh, show that kind of translation. It's, up, it's, it's your expertise, okay? And also, yun means uh, reason. Shengdong means vividness or vitality. Sometimes we call it shen yun, vividness or real spirit. And this idea has been, uh, you know, promulgated 1,500 years ago. Until now, if you ask any traditional Chinese artists in mainland China or in Taiwan, and you ask them, what is the primal standard of aesthetics in your ink wash painting? They will tell you, qi yun san dong. But it's mystery. And you, if you ask, what can, what can you tell me what qi yun san dong is? Oh, it's very hard to understand. Qin Sono is the one that's Qi, you know. Come <laughs> on, man. Okay, we are 21st century. Can you take something something uh, uh, solid for me? Okay, so, uh, but when it come back to uh, uh, Xie He's uh, uh, Qi Yun Sheng Dong, uh, that is from Wu uh, Hua Pin Lu, uh, that kind of uh, so-called uh, uh, criticism of painting uh, on ancient painting. And uh, that recall, we call the Liu Fa, or sex rules or principle. And Liu Fa, from the very first to the time first, is that, you know, the kind of hierarchical level. The highest of Chinese painting is called the Qi Yun Sheng Dong. The second level is Wu Fa Yong Di. The third level is Yin Wu Xiang Xin. The uh, the fourth level is Sui Lei Fu Cai covering, and fifth level is structure opposition and the Chinese Mo Xie copy mimicking. If you do art uh, uh, practice, you know what does it mean. You know, uh, from the practical side to the spiritual side, we all know it. But uh, 1500 years ago, this guy invented that and become a kind of immovable, uh, a kind of, you know, a standard that nobody can challenge it. Just follow me. For example, so the following theory, I mean, those gentlemen, I mean, you know, long time ago, uh, if you look at the time, you know, uh, I just uh, put it in sequence. So in 187, and he said that literature is majored in Qi. Think how many years ago? A long time ago. But I have to remind you that when it comes to Qi, actually a kind of a personality cultivation. You need to cultivate your personality. And your personality will reveal what you do. So it's a very kind of a Confucianism and the plus uh, Zen together. 
and we call it new Confucianism. I'll show you that. So there is actually a scholar in front of new Confucianism in Dongna. And Lu Ji Wen Fu, he said that, Long Tian Di Yu Xin Nei, Zuo Wan Lu Yu Bi Duan, there is a translation here. Uh, my translation, well, just for reference, not very good. Um, it's about mind, the spirit. Xin Nei means that the outside in here. That's mind, spirit. And, but after Xie uh, He, uh, after the uh, Wen Fu, uh, that is the Gunghua Pinu, the six principles, uh, he followed that kind of literature, Chinese literature standard, and uh, it create uh, another standard for, for Chinese painting. And Nan Qi Si Pin, he said that the backbone spirit. And then Wen Xin Diao Rong, the most famous one, uh, the literary mind and the carving of dragons, he said that spirit in mind, the chi holds the key. Okay, always chi, chi here, chi. Yeah, I know. Without chi, I can't breathe and I will die. Yes, I know. And just a kind of a very interesting way, but I know that that kind of chi is very abstract. And in 800, Bi Fa Ji, that is, uh, you know, from Wuhua Pindu to uh, a visual Chinese art painting theorist, uh, Jin Hao, he said that qi shi xiang shen, the look of the sun shui should possess qi momentum. Uh, in Beizong Dynasty, 960, Tu Hua Jin Wen Zi, that is a very famous one. I remember when I was a student, I nearly need to memorize several chapters, memorize several chapters. So uh, the qi in shen dong, you know, I shouldn't say how ridiculous it was before, but when I uh, try to study MA program at the uh, 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 fine art department at the National Taiwan Normal University, and every student, if you want to go to the test examination, you need to memorize six principles. So until now, without looking at, I still can memorize them. Jin Sheng Dong Gu Fa Yong Bi, Yin Wu Xiang Xin Sui Lei Fu Cai, Jin Ning Wei Zi Chuan Ning Mo Xie. I still memorize that. <laughs> so, so that is become a kind of, you know, the absolute standard that every student, all the students, if you want to do Chinese study and practice creation, Qi Yun Sheng Dong is the, you know, the one. And I extract three points for you from Tu Hua Jian Yun Zi. He said that, this is a perfect and the transcendental theory. The second one, only through feelings and the epiphany. See, epiphany. It cannot be told. The third one is quality personality leads to high qi and vitality. So we often say that zen ping gao, the high personality leads to high creation, but it's not necessary, I know, <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> so this is how I mean, ancient Chinese artists and the theory proposed that kind of idea into Chinese painting. Okay, so Mi Fu, perhaps as you, uh, you can see that uh, they have some kind of the, uh, uh, this painting is created by him. I, as you can see that there are some features. First of all, uh, leave some uh, blank on papers. Look, there's a blank here. The second one, we call it Liu Bai. The second one is, uh, you know, showing brushwork moving. Look, you can see that kind of a brush. The trace is a brush over there. And the third one is retain values, or we call it more fun wuzi, because only Chinese red, uh, literary painting believe in only, only use black, only black, no color. That is too mundane. <laughs> that is too, you know, vulgar, only black, to show high quality of personality. Uh, the third one is that uh, personality cultivation, we call it xiu yang, and that is bi mo gong fu, bi fa and mo is bi mo gong fu, we call it brush and ink, uh, uh, some kind of, uh, uh, you know, practice. And also, Taoism Zen, Wu Wei, become a kind of a literary painting, and that such kind of literary painting has been divided by Dong Qi Chang, uh, uh, Sixteen thousand in his uh, very seminal book called Hua Chan Si Sui Bi because he divided. Oh, hey, I got it. There are two schools of Chinese painting. 
The northern school is very finite, very concrete. And the second school in the southern part of China, that is southern school. And southern school become a dominant school in Taiwan. And those fine nine and very concrete painting were uh, was looked down upon by the southern school. This is what the truth it is. And back in Taiwan, and perhaps some of you will assume that okay, now nowadays because Taiwan has uh, you know a kind of a uh, uh, democratization and free uh, freedom and uh, very open and uh, uh, high tech you know, AI, all sort of thing. But after the 1950, the, the end of the Second World War, uh, as a matter of fact, the society very much hold on to the qi yun sheng dong, the same, the inherited in Taiwan. For example, in 1963, a very, very respectful uh, scholar called Yu Jinzi, and he said that uh, the prospect of Guo Hua, the Chinese painting, and uh, the development of international modern painting, and he quote, Qi Yun Sangdong is the one we, at that time, Chinese people should stick to. And in 1970, about 1966, this uh, Xu Fuquan, a new Confucianism, and uh, he continued that kind of idea. And again, I mean, furtherly criticized the time that young artists try to incorporate abstract painting into ink wash painting, and they accuse them as communist. And for example, Liu Guozong, nowadays, uh, he is still alive, uh, 96 years old. He mentioned many times at that time, he, every day, I mean, is waiting for the Chiang Kai-she regime, the KMT, I mean, you know, we have a Jin Zhong, a garrison command, something like KGD, to get him. And so that kind of, you know, there is another anti-force, counter-force that, no, Qi Yun Sheng Dong is not equal to abstract painting. Qi Yun Sheng Dong is following our ancestor, looking at the nature and, the, you know, imprint or describe what nature is. It must be figured. Okay, not non figurative. And even in calligraphy that I write before in 1991, 1993, when I was very young, my very first book about uh, uh, Chinese uh, uh, so called engraving calligraphy or, or beixue. I mean, those, those characters carved on the stone, we call it uh, beixue. And still, there are some kind of a Qi Yun Sheng Dong here, rhythm. And in Tang Dynasty, they are very much part of the rule, the structure. So student learn calligraphy will start from Tang Dynasty standard script because they are very, very standard because they follow the rule. So my suggestion of that, as, uh, is that if anyone you are interested in uh, learning Chinese calligraphy, started from Tang Dynasty, because they tell you every rule, clearly. But don't start from uh, Jin or Yuan Min, because uh, they are very wild. <laughs> you can't find a rule. <laughs> okay, so uh, there are some kind of the uh, uh, five principles, like six principles in, in calligraphy. It's very much, again, following Qi Yun Sheng Dong to criticize what is what a, a, a good calligraphy is. And this is one, don't, uh, don't be scared, because I developed this uh, for many, many years, okay? And I tried to scare my students at that time. See, yeah, they also have some uh, knowledge that you don't have, but uh, it's just a kind of very simply to show that, okay, the low label is the one that Chinese literary or Chinese painting they don't like. They prefer this one. But the higher level is Zi Ran Shen Dong. So this is why Qi Yun Sheng Dong become a dominant aestheticism thought in Chinese art history through thousand years. But then the third section is, you know, get back to Taiwan. 
what I'm talking about, not the whole Taiwanese uh, history or art history, but I'm going to show you that, you know, it's a little bit complicated. Anyone, we have a, a Taiwan study expert here that to Taiwan, I mean, for the past 400 years, uh, we have uh, at least have, there are eight regions, so different language, different people. Uh, the Dutch come here, and Spanish people come here, and Japanese people come here, and of course Chinese people come here. So different, different kind of a regime bring about different culture to Taiwan. So it's it's very entitled to say that uh, well, Taiwan is not a perfect society, but it's entitled to say just like Australia that Taiwan is a multicultural society. Okay, so. I'm going to talk about 1950s because in the 1970s, traditional Chinese painting were introducing and the introduction of a Western art, Japanese art, and in Japanese art in the colonial period from 1895 to 1945, 50 years, Japanese introduced a Western art style such as watercolor, oil painting, uh, 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 or yoga, Japanese painting, or we call it goash painting. A guru, no, sticky, sticky color, yeah. And in the 1950s, that is the one I'm going to focus on. The modernization of traditional Chinese, American art was introducing. And in the 1970s, the movement of native, uh, nativism. And uh, as we know, in the 1990s, uh, Taiwan become a democracy, democratic society because of the addiction of martial law. And I want to give you a more complicated, but don't be scared because I just want to scare my student. Okay. <laughs> uh, there are two important. This is about the Taiwan American PRC relations. So, you know, we just uh, have a, 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 a premier, a Chinese premier come here to visit and they're very about uh, Suri Communique and Taiwan relations, all sort of thing. I try to figure out what's happening. And so, this is why I use such kind of idea to do it. Two important factors should be noticed. 1951-49, U.S. aid to Taiwan. Why? Korean War. The Truman president wanted to support Taiwan because he wanted to block the Chinese communists, you know, cross the Pacific Ocean to the United States. So at the very beginning, the American government has already given up Taiwan and President Chiang kai regime. But at the end of the day, he said that, okay, we got to support you. And what is supporting? I mean, the funding. 100 million US dollars from 1949 to 1970s. And this kind of the new support, it's international relations, as I know. But as you can see, that American culture will be brought in. And, uh, you know, uh, according to some memoir, I mean, the uh, Zhongshan North Road the in Taipei City. Uh, you can listen to different kind of American country music and the pop. An American soldier, when they have a holiday from Vietnam to Taiwan, and uh, there will be two, uh, 25, uh, 25,000 soldiers for holiday in Taiwan. Can you imagine that? So this is good business, isn't it? Okay, right. And uh, the second one is the uh, 1966 uh, Chinese, uh, you know, cultural revolution. But the next year, the Chiang kai uh say, hey, you want to destroy Chinese culture, and then I want to revive Chinese culture. So in Taiwan, we have a so-called Chinese culture renaissance movement, Zhonghua Wenhua Fuxin Yun Dong. So at that day, you know, some of our scholars will say, oh, Taiwan preserve a uh, uh, good uh, quality Chinese culture here in Taiwan, but uh, you know, Zhonghua Wenhua Fuxin Dong accidentally preserve do that job. I have to say, it's just a political motivation, not only for the purpose of a culture. Think about that's a Chiang Kai-shek regime, okay? Right. So, uh, Chiang Kai-shek and Jiang Jingguo, uh, after you know, they relocated to Taiwan, the Republic of China relocated to Taiwan. And uh, from 1950 to 1975, Chiang Kai-shek regime. And then his son, Jiang Jingguo, took the power until 1988. And you remember 1987 is the year of lifting of martial law. Right, but two elements should be pay attention to. 
In the 1950s, the Menden emigrated. You know, thinking about my hometown. Oh, I'm a far away from men in China living in this island. I'm very much homesick. What is my China? Where is my hometown? And literature, especially literature. And the second one is the modern uh, mo uh, modernist movement because of the influence of Japanese culture. Uh, sorry, uh, American culture. Right. Uh, thanks to any translation, because I took one poem that is written by Gao Xinqiang, and the mentality of so-called the huge purification, purification and the confusion. Yeah, he said that. That is a kind of 大分后, 大分期的时代. So he said that, you know, such kind of poem. Thank you, Annie. Beautiful. Thank you. Do you want to read? <laughs> okay, then, then, then we, uh, let me read it because this poem is so beautiful. What was that cutting cold ice and snow on my wretched back? What was that covering molten lava over my sorrowful eyes? What turned my nimble body into this silent, stony soul? And such kind of mentality is kind of love and hate mentality. I love modernity, you know. I love my Chinese hometown culture, but at the end of the day, I can't betray my, my home culture. So it's kind of, you know, talkable. Okay, such kind of mentality paved the way or become a kind of bed for modern Chinese painting. Because at time, people in Taiwan after 1959, they got to call themselves Japanese from Chinese. Can you imagine that? 50 years of Japanese colonization, suddenly they are requesting that now you are not Ch Japanese now, you are Chinese. So a kind of accusation of being slaved by uh, Japan and the Taiwanese is a slave to Japanese and a fake Chinese, that kind of accusation goes everywhere. And including in visual art because such kind of the uh, uh, Toyoka painting or Japanese painting or Guache painting was accused that this is a fake Chinese art, right? So cultural politics. And if you want to know the story, you can uh, check on Guo Jisun, Jason Guo's book in 2000, uh, this story. But all you know, that is, uh, you know, a race, a kind of a, a ideology, a kind of an issue. That is what we call the Guohua. Have you ever thought of a Guohua? Guo, what does it mean? Okay, double meaning, Chinese and the national. So in Taiwan, in the 1950s, we have a Guohua, Guoju, opera, Guoyu, national language, and the Guobi, coin, the currency. And this Guo, last Guo, double meaning. On the one hand, you got to be think, uh, identify yourself as Chinese. On the other hand, you got to be loyal to the new nation. So Guo become a double, man, a double meaning. With that kind of pressure, now Taiwan has four kind of so-called ink wash painting. The traditional one, gone. Because young uh, artists doesn't like that kind of uh, old modi or traditional one. <laughs> The second one, Japanese painting, Goash painting, Toyoka, is belongs to uh, Japan, Japanese culture. But we have a dozen, a lot of a very good, excellent uh, Goash painting artists that is Taiwanese. At that time, they are very much oppressed. They keep their mouths shut because of the uh, you know identification pressure. And well, two new art species coming out, the so-called Modern Chinese painting like this, can you see that that actually is a one abstract painting, right? But with some kind of a brushwork, like calligraphy, like uh, mountain water painting, we call it dance painting, but in, China, in Chinese art history, we we'll call it. Uh, uh, by the way, when I talk about Chinese painting, my Chinese is culturally Chinese, not political Chinese. Don't get me wrong, okay? <laughs> and we have. Uh, a local ink wash painting like this because uh, uh, the so-called Wai Sheng Ren or Manander, they came to Taiwan, they find out 
their brush work doesn't work. Because uh, the in Taiwan, you have a lot of, uh, you know, green mountain, water, mist, moisty. And how can you use the brush to describe the landscape painting, I mean, like in mainland China? So they develop, developed a new technique. So such kind of new technique, the very basic idea is outdoor sketch. So they relearn themselves from the nature. So they have a, such kind of a new painting. So my journey of the uh, looking for that is very much a, like an antidote. Uh, okay, let me tell you that, you know, Lan Song, Xin Qi Ji has a poem called It means that I'm looking for the genuine uh, uh, object or genuine idea in the world. And end of the day, I find out the true love is at home. Yeah. Something like that. Can, okay, so uh, I assume I want to look for Xie He's Qi Yun Sheng Dong in the past. And uh, with that kind of research and back to explain what does it mean by abstract in watch painting. But end of the day, I find out it's wrong. Because the answer is here. Every uh, artist in Taiwan, they try to use the term qi yun sheng dong, but at the end of the day, the performance is totally different, but they will say, hey, this is qi yun sheng dong. So it comes to me that Hoxman's, the invention of tradition works. Case one. This gentleman is Taiwanese, Bo Xiu, and uh, uh, in the 1970, uh, 27, he attended the, the very first uh, 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 official salon in Taiwan that is uh, established by Japanese government. And as you can see, his style is very traditional Chinese painting. And uh, in the middle of the time, he turned to Japanese painting. But after the Second World War, he turned to using more some kind of blankness and uh, uh, brushwork and uh, mist and the clouds to present his work. The three styles change so much. And what he wanted to say is that he tried to do some kind of a cultural redirection or cultural re-identification. Okay, my work is very close to, because there is a kind of a controversy of so-called uh, 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 authenticity of a genuine or genuine Wuhua debate at that time. And he was one of that. So he tries to show his uh, loyalty and identity, identifying that he was a Chinese people and close to Chinese culture. So he changed his style. So the very first key is that he still stick to qi yun sheng dong, but the real purpose is to redirect his identification. The second one, perhaps some of you know that if you do photography history, Lam Jinsan. Lam Jinsan uh, lived 105 years old, and uh, the very first 50 years in Shanghai, the second 50 years in Taiwan, and he developed the so-called Ji Jin Se Yin, or composite photography, or photo montage photography. And he, interestingly, this gentleman is earlier, 30 years earlier than uh, Photoshop 30 years ago because he do Photoshop in the dark room, not on the computer. And he mixed things together. And that is Photoshop. Yeah, what we are doing is Photoshop. So he is the ancestor of all Photoshop. <laughs> 30 years earlier than Photoshop in the United States, as far as I'm concerned. And he this is the, uh, you know, the very beginning one that he tried to use different kind of trees and the mountains and putting them together as a new, uh, as a new photography. We call it composite photography. But but the question is that what about you know when you create things? So you put two things together and what about the space? I mean between them, the incongruent incongruence of a project. How do you create? He said, "Hey, I have a good idea." 
气运生动 ，because our ancestor tell us that deep blanks and the brushwork and put more mist on it, and that is Chinese photography. So he actually tried to promote Chinese photography in China, but end of the day, he needs to rely on the idea of qi yun zheng dong. But in actually, he's trying to solve his own problem. I mean, between stuff, how can you harmonize the incongruence? And I have evidence. It's just not not just a guess. In uh, his book published in 1957, he said that this is a photography theory. I mean, the technique how to do it. But they say it's very much to do with the uh, Chinese art theory. Look, Qi Jin San Ji Jin Zuo Fa, and he said that oh, I borrow idea from Qi Yun Zheng Dong. And the very first day, Qi Yun Zheng Dong. So he, we need to move a lot of mist and the cloud into the uh, uh, his photography, and that can create the so called Chinese photography. Well, he's a respectful person because he tried to uh, introduce beautiful Chinese uh, scene and people to the world. Because at that time, he he find he found out that you know there are a lot of ugly Chinese uh, images. I mean, promulgated in the world, like uh, you know. Uh, Qin Dynasty cruel penalties and uh, uh, pigtail, something like that, and all dirty things. And in his mind, that uh, hey, I should introduce a beautiful China to the world at that time. So that is a very respectful and a humble and uh, thing. And so, as you can see, that uh, we have a Bei Song Guoxi, this kind of a very famous one, Zhao Chun Tu, the early spring uh, painting, but. He uh, put different kind of trees and the uh, house and mountain and mist together and uh, uh, leave a lot of space. And he used, uh, sometimes he used the, the cotton, I mean, in the dark room and to subscribe it, you know, something that kind of work. And uh, that is the very first Chinese photography at that time. So Qi Yun Zheng Dong for him is a tool, solve his own problem, technique tool. Okay. And the third case, case three, okay, I got time nearly there, uh, is Liu Guozong. Liu Guozong is the one who criticized, on the one hand, those people who created traditional painting that, oh, okay, you are ancient, you are not the time. The contemporary art in China shouldn't be like, like you know, the traditional painting. And on the other hand, he criticized the Taiwanese or Dutch painter. Because they said that that one belongs to Japan and you are slaved by Japanese culture. And so you don't believe Chinese painting. And what is the general painting during the time? Hey, this is the painting that I wanted to show you guys. Okay, a kind of, that kind of, you know, uh, abstract painting, but uh, with mist. But in his theory, because he writes a lot of our criticism and our theory at that time. This element is, is so amazing. On the one hand, he created a lot of great works at that time. But on the other hand, during that about six, seven years time, he write more than 200 articles, 200. Amazing because I, I read every single his art articles and I find out this one, this young man is so energetic. So I'm not energetic enough. <laughs> He's an alcoholic. Uh, I'm an alcoholic as well. Yeah. So look, he tried to say that empathy spiritual surreal in his book. And uh, the technique that he borrowed is rubbing, splash, calligraphic lines, and the black. That is abstract painting in China in Taiwan. Remember that in 1966, it's Cultural Revolution in mainland China. No modern painting at all at that time. Okay, and this is a very kind of a response to that. You know, when he created this painting, 1961, his wife just burst a kind of feeling that, 是啊,或许这叫做气运生动吧,充满了一股生命的力量。Yes, maybe this is called the Qi Yun Zheng Dong. 
full of power of God. Ladies and gentlemen, from the beginning to the end, I talk about the Qi Yin Sen Dong. But in the abstract ink watch painting, he still use stick to Qi Yin Sen Dong, but with different performance. Case four, last one. Uh, Fu Juan Tu is also an ender. Relocated to uh, Taiwan in 1949. I mean, a lot of the artists at that time all relocated, followed Chiang Kai Shek regime to Taiwan in 1949. And he find out his brushwork doesn't work because the landscape in Taiwan is different from men in China. So he, I mean, uh, because uh, his first generation students are my friends, and they describe him that he focus on you know, have some kind of a lunch bag, something like that, and they go to the Taiwanese uh, coast to, uh, to observe sea, observe mountain and mist, and go to Ali Mountain the whole day, the whole week. Try to absorb the Taiwanese landscape and thing into his work. And can you see that? That is different, right? A little bit like watercolor. And the brushwork is more lively and very localized because the scene he described is time one. So this is kind of another one. And he proposed another theory that, yeah, Qi Yin Dong is good, but it's a mystery. Nobody understand. And why not we go outside and do sketch and write and create a beautiful landscape painting. And then when it's beautiful, then it's Qi Yin Dong. And I have evidence. I'm not just telling the the joke is it's true because when I do archive, there's a data. I mean, the document he write and he said that Qi Yun Sen Dong, this theory is too abstruse to comprehend. So why not be more practical and pragmatic? Well, when you do auto sketch, but he still keep the Qi Yun Sen Dong over there. And we do auto sketch, and that is Qi Yun Sen Dong. So now it comes to my end of conclusion. Taiwanese new painting movement, my Si Le Jin at that time, he noticed that there are different kinds of species of new Taiwanese modern art emerged because of the combination of Western abstract painting and Chinese aesthetics, qi yin sen dong together. And then here we have this kind of a, a different kind of painting like, you know, this one. I'm, I'm writing an essay for him, Zhuang Ce, and this one, and from uh, Guangzhou, and uh, this one, a kind of a, ink, uh, a stone carving, I think, I believe. And this one, silk print. Printing, printing, printing. Yeah, so when you mention that, gentlemen, you mentioned about printing. I write a uh, three printing book uh, biography for three uh, printing artists in time. So I know the trajectory of that. <laughs> okay. Uh, Even uh, in uh, moving, okay, the uh, 2000 and the uh, crouching tiger hidden dragon. You 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 must be uh, you know memorized that kind of uh, you know two guys fight in in the bamboo forest. What, what is that? I mean, nobody can stand on the bamboo forest. It's kind of images, you know. Uh, well, Chinese Kung Fu, that's beyond our imagination. We guys don't know. If you cannot do Chinese Kung Fu, you know it. And uh, the recent, well, it's a long time ago, uh, God bless him because he has uh, some kind of brain uh, disease now. He, he, he can get, get worse, but uh, the assassin, Niu Yinyang, uh, describing uh, a female assassin in Tang Dynasty, the images I should create is very much misty stuff. Again, the criticism is a romantic as Sun Sui ink painting, I mean landscape painting, Qi Yun Sen Dong. And the criticism on the Crouch Tiger Hidden Dragon is fresh ink of mountain water of sublime Qi. Ladies and gentlemen, 15,000 years ago, Qi, and nowadays, Qi. And well, we can keep chi, but the most important thing is that we have different artistic performance, isn't it? 
So here comes my conclusion, main conclusion, very quick. Okay, this is the impact of modernization. And the second thing is that uh, it's a mention of tradition or modern myth for me, like Roland Barthes said, modern myth. The third one, uh, we should redecipher and reinterpret the modern abstract painting through Qi Yun Sendong nowadays. And I think that this is genuinely a real platform that the West versus the East in terms of Qi Yun Sondo abstract Chinese painting. So I call that affinity because we see the same thing, but you know, underneath is different. So I strongly believe that uh, you know the similar appearance is not necessary to be similar inside. We look different, but I'm a good guy, you are a good guy. So we look different, but we all good guy inside. But uh, with similar outside I mean, appearance, it's not necessary to be said that the inside is, is the same. Very hard. Okay. So this fifth one is uh, I call this kind of the so-called positive eclecticism. It's not only hybridity amalgamation, also called the Zhong Yong. And every artist try to choose a good way to mix uh, the West elements, abstract painting and East together and produce this course to support his uh, artwork. The sixth is a new way of seeing it and deciphering. So when I look at this painting in my mind, I will not take them as, oh, this is an abstract painting. No way. It's different. Trajectory is totally different. And revolution of new skills in ink wash painting, I find out this is a kind of an era of invention of new technique at that time. Because in order to create a new abstract ink wash painting. You need to use that brush, the single brush, to create different kind of the technique. And reshaping methodology and theory for me, I'm blessed for that. It's totally open my, my mind and my eye that what the, uh, mm, okay, okay, that's really, really different. So my methodology is totally different. So now I'm focusing on looking at the, uh, Abstract ink wash painting is methodology, is thinking, and is theory. And again, this is very much to do the formation of identity and our subjective, because this is genuine MIT, made in Taiwan. Yeah, yep. not Massachusetts Institute, no. <laughs> made in Taiwan, okay? And, okay, when we look at this one, the, this is the final, uh, uh, last two slides, I promise you. Nowadays, the price and the value of abstract ink wash and penny become a kind of a, a major market in the world. Thinking about this gentleman, Zhao Wuji, his work, this painting, auctioned at uh, 278 million Hong Kong dollars because auctioned in Hong Kong, 278 million. Hong Kong dollars, thinking about that, how much money. And the Liu Guosong is the same, 6 million, 208,000 uh, Hong Kong dollars. So in terms of price, those abstract ink wash painting really create a new car market nowadays, but its value is still under evaluation. Last, that is Qi. Okay, it reminds me, uh, a point that uh, in uh, uh, New Confucianism, Song Dai Li Xue Jia Chen Hao, and he said that, Wan Wu Jing Guan Jie Zi De, Si Si Jia Xin Yu Ren Dong. Okay, the translation here, not very good. I apologize. And Dao Tong Tian Di You Xing Wan. The last two sentences are my favorite. Dao Tong Tian Di You Xing Wan. Yeah. Si Ru Feng Yun Bian Tai Zhong Metamorphosis. So, I mean, 30 years ago, when those Chinese uh, uh, thinkers and uh, uh, art, this, uh, uh, historians and uh, uh, artists, what they think about uh, this Qi Yun Sheng Dong is not a concrete landscape painting, but it's about beyond, but it's about metamorphosis. So nowadays, those contemporary uh, 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 ink wash painter create abstract painting, we can't call them a traitor of Chinese culture. Actually, 
they are excellent guy and good artist following Chinese ancestor, Chinese theories and the poetry and theory that, you know, we have believed that beyond and uh, transmorphosis is the way that so-called Chinese art to go. And uh, well, I would like to share with the uh, story of art in Taiwan after the Second World War with you and uh, my new book. Hopefully you enjoy it. Thank you very much.